Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Thought I'd do one more video here high above Porthgora Cove. You know, you've got a fantastic location and a beautiful day. You've got to make the most. So sorry you've had to see me in the same shirt and shorts for three times in a row, but never mind. I'm sure you'll forgive me. Talking about commodities as part of our little series on asset classes. And we are updating some of the really early videos just because video and audio quality are a lot better these days. I'm sure you'll agree. So this is an update of episode 33. And now we're at 286, I think. So... You know, it's a long time ago that we did those early ones. We've talked about uh, shares and cash and gilts and bonds and stuff, and this time it's the turn of commodities. So before we get into that, let me thank my friends down here in the bottom right, Seven Investment Management, who continue to sponsor me here, for which I'm really, really grateful. So we've dealt with the main asset classes, as I said, and those four things, really, that we've talked about, cash, gilts and corporate bonds, shares and property most investment portfolios just have those things in just those four things um, but there's more to investing than that and i think any broadly uh, sort of intelligent portfolio should have more in it than just those things and so these are what you could call alternatives and we're going to deal with them over the next two or three videos but commodities are anything you could say actually that term means anything which is bought and sold can't you anything's a commodity if you can buy it and sell it but specifically when we're talking about investing we're talking about stuff which we as the human race consume so let me give you some examples so that you can uh, work out what i'm on about so perhaps uh, energy so things like crude oil heating oil and natural gas all things that we consume as humans uh, food so wheat sugar rice uh, corn we call those soft commodities. There are other kind of agricultural commodities like cattle, obviously, orange juice, pork bellies, like mine, uh, industrial metals, so iron, copper, zinc, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum. All of these are bought and sold in markets around the world and are therefore investable in, which is a horrendously grammatically imperfect sentence. Gold is a special case, I'm going to talk about that next time, but all these things are things which we as human beings consume and hence you can buy and sell them and so they can form part of a portfolio. They behave uniquely to any other kind of asset class and they even behave differently to themselves. So um, industrial metals, for example, like copper and iron, they will be closely linked to, uh, currently at least, the developing economy. So if places like China and India, which are building things at an incredible rate, um, they need iron to do that. And so they are buying iron, a lot of it from Brazil and other places, um, to, in order to carry on their building programs. And so the price of iron goes up if the Chinese are building more stuff. Um, food prices will be affected by the harvest. So if we have a poor harvest, there'll be less food around, and so the price will go up. So they behave differently. And because of that, they're important diversifiers. We've used that word lots recently um, because they help uh, spread your portfolio around to spread the risk. Now, most of us, you know, are not in the market to buy, you know, 100,000 tonnes of corn or, you know, 100,000 tonnes of copper. Most of us, ordinary mere mortals, will buy commodities through a fund of some kind, either an ordinary fund like an OIC or a unit trust, um, or through something called an ETF or an ETC, as Exchange Traded Fund or Exchange Traded Commodities. Now, those latter ones I talked about in episode 218, so I'll put a link up here uh, to that. But most people don't buy commodities direct. We buy them as a fund and put them as part of our pension or our ISA portfolio. But they're really important because of their diversifying characteristics. And that's what commodities are, and that's how you buy them. And that's essentially it, so not too long, this one. Next, we're going to talk about that very specific kind of commodity, though, which is gold. So thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you next time. Well, I'll have moved on a bit and probably changed my shirt. <laughs> see you next time.